Hey guys, my name is Christian. Hopefully you are all doing well and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to take a look at Jens Bogren's new drum sample pack and if you're a fan of metal you probably heard quite a few of his productions. He has worked with bands such as Catatonia, Opeth, Soulwork, Arch Enemy and many many more. On today's episode I will show you guys a mix that I've done using these samples. I'm gonna go through how I stack them and talk a little bit about my processing. I will also talk about the sample pack in general. But we'll start off by listening to the mix that I've done using these samples. So let's listen to that and I'll see you here back in a bit. Alright, so that was my demo and hopefully you guys thought that it sounded quite alright. So let's talk a little bit about the sample pack in general. So you get kick, snare and tom samples, you get TSI files for trigger 2, NKI files for contact and also WAV files. If you buy the deluxe package you also get the individual microphones that they used to build this sample pack. And uh, the, one of the biggest issues when you have sample packs that are based on acoustic drums is that they usually sound quite nice when they are soloed but kind of falls apart when you start to implement them in your mix and adding other elements in your mix. But I can happily say that these samples survive. They sound just as big and punchy as you'd expect from a producer such as Jens and I can definitely recommend these samples. And if you are interested, you can check out more demos on their website. I'll link it down below. And there you have a couple of examples from Jens. And they, of course, sound absolutely awesome. All right, so let's jump into Pro Tools. And I'll show you how I stacked the samples and tell you a little bit about my processing. So let's jump into Pro Tools and I'll see you there. All right, so here we have the session. And what I like to do when I use samples is that I like to use different samples that sound different, that complement each other. So you'll get, in the end, you'll get a very nice Frankenstein kick and snare. And uh, we'll start off here with the kick. And the kick is completely replaced. That's just how it goes sometimes when you record a real drummer. And uh, first off, I use the nice Marmot Dry kick sample here very punchy very nice sounding kick and then the roundhouse dry which gives you a bit more of that uh, club attack to the kick and then the ball slap dry and it's a bit the same there just to add some punch 
and then the plumb was dry and that's definitely more dry has a bit more mids and uh, yeah and then I used harder please dry and that's also very punchy and then the chic slap dry in the end here which definitely is punchy and I'd imagine that would be very nice if you want more in your face kind of kick sound so let's listen to what it sounds like when I add the samples here from the start So the last sample definitely added some great punch to the kick. And you might wonder why I flip the face on the ball slap dry sample. And sometimes, you know, flipping a face wrong can actually help the sound uh, depending on what you want to achieve. So I definitely recommend you guys trying that sometime. Everything doesn't have to be in face. Uh, flipping a an instrument or something uh, quote unquote wrong can actually help the mix. So that was something that I probably did on the fly and thought that it worked in context of the music. So let's continue here with the ambience kick drum and here I used three samples. So let's start from the top here. So that's a very nice room. Could probably be Studio Mega which I recorded in and uh, myself and the chic slap wet sounds a bit drier not as big of a room and then we have the chic slap overhead and I probably felt that I wanted some more presence to the kick so let's play both the the kick sample and the ambience kick samples together So the kick ambience helps the kick a lot. So I can definitely recommend you guys using more ambient samples. They can definitely help make the drums sound more cohesive if you use a lot of samples. And it just creates a depth and a, a kind of a wide sound to the drums. So let's continue on to the snare and I'll show you guys the real snare here first. So it sounds fine, you know, it sounds like an acoustic uh, good snare. And here on the, the trigger track I used five samples and we'll start from the top once again just to show you what they sound like soloed. So that uh, Spanker dry sample definitely has a nice ring to it and to me sustain on snares is what makes them pop in the mix so don't kill the sustain work with it it will be your friend and then the wanker dry sample and what i wanted to achieve here is if you have a high pitched or higher pitched ringy snare you might want something deeper and more punchy so that's the wanker dry sample and then the meat stick dry and that's also quite ringy, uh, but I kind of like it. And uh, I just probably wanted more sustain to the snare. And the super nice dry is probably a supraphonic, a bit higher pitched to give the snare some uh, punch. And if you buy the deluxe package, you get the spike me in sample, which is basically a transient. Sounds terrible on its own, but if you use it yourself, you'll find that it will definitely help the snare to pop in the mix. So play it together with the, the real snare. So 
so extremely punchy and big so let's move on to the snare sample the ambience snare so that's a super nice wet huge room and the peak all on wet I guess the guys that named the samples are 15 years old but that's fine I guess So that's a bit higher pitched, which can help the snare to pop in the mix. Meat stick wet is quite low tuned, has a nice ring to it. And then I actually added a old slate sample here. Uh, I just felt that the snare needed some more splash, so I just threw that in here. I'll show you how it sounds as well. So let's listen to the all the snare microphones and uh, I'll add them on as we go. So once again the snare ambience is a huge part of the whole snare drum sound. It might sound as a bit much but I kind of set the levels when I listen to the rest of the music. Then I'll see how much uh, sustain I need and how much splash I need for the snare to, to go through the mix. And I also used the tom samples. I'll show them here as well. We'll take this nice tom example here in the end and here i tried a few of uh, the different samples i went with the thomas tom samples i'll show you them here first soloed So when you have uh, real drums, I think you can be, uh, I don't think that you have to care that much with the velocity layers. The real drums will help uh, making them sound more natural. So this is just a matter of making them punchy. And I'll show you here with the real toms. So it's really a matter of what you want to achieve. You know, when you heard when I pulled down the triggered samples, they definitely sounded more natural, but I'll also show you guys with the overheads. And then I think it makes a bit more sense having these samples so loud. Alright, so that is it for today's episode. I definitely think that you guys should check out these samples. They sound absolutely amazing. And uh, if you like this kind of content, please hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you guys around.